Hi, my dear student. How are you today? Are you good? Excellent. Welcome to our English class. For today, we are going to talk about a, a dessert, okay? I have two questions for you. Okay, pay attention. Listen carefully. Okay, one question. Do you like to live in the dessert? Yes or no? Okay, question number two. What dessert do you prefer? Or what is your favorite dessert? Primero, eh, ¿le gustaría vivir en el desierto? In my case, I don't like. And the second, what dessert do you prefer? ¿Cuál desierto usted prefiere o cuál es su desierto favorito? Okay, thank you for your answer. Now, let's start with our class. For today, our topic is the dessert and our objective to, uh, you, uh, to use com uh, comparative and superlatives. Okay, let's start. Please, open your color book, my dear student, on page number 71. Activity D. 71. Complete the chart. According to the reader book. De acuerdo al reader, al libro pequeñito, vamos a completar esto, ¿ok? Page number 8071. Ok. You have to complete a, according to the adjective. Coldest, biggest. Please read. Windest and hottest. Excellent. Now, you have to decide according to the um, ad, um, adjective, the dessert, Atacama, Antarctic, or Sahara. Okay, please, try to do that. Trate de hacer. Acorde a lo que leímos en el reading, vamos a comparar what is the biggest dessert, what is the windest dessert, and what is the hottest dessert. In the case of coldest, uh, the answer is Antarctic. What is coldest? Do you remember? Coldest, coldest. Exactly, frío. Antarctic is the coldest dessert around the world. Okay? La Antártica es el desierto más frío alrededor del mundo. Okay? Let's start con biggest. ¿Completaron la, eh, la respuesta? Recuerde, tratemos de recordar cuál era el desierto más grande, biggest. Ok, in this case, according to the reading, the answer in this case is Sahara Dessert. Sahara is the biggest dessert around the world. Remember, with, comp uh, with superlative you have to use EST in the final of the word. In this case, uh, big is one syllable and you have to write again the final word, the final letter. Recuerde que cuando una palabra era monosílaba, es decir, que tiene una sola sílaba y termine, eh, era consonante, vocal consonante, se duplicaba la última letrita y se aumentaba EST, que es la terminación de los superlativos. Vamos a separar big, big, one syllable, ok? For this reason you have to write again G, biggest, and you have to write Sahara dessert, only Sahara, ok? The next, please, this dry, dry eh, termina en Y, ¿no es cierto? Dry, pero... ¿Qué decía la regla de los superlativos cuando un adjetivo terminaba en Y? ¿Qué pasaba? Si usted respondió que la Y le cambiábamos por esta Y pequeñita, está en lo correcto. Dry, driest, with, con la Y. Recuerde, le cambiamos la Y con la Y y le aumentamos EST, que es la terminación para los superlativos. ¿Ok? Windy. Windy, what is windy? Ok, please, ok, let's, vamos a recordar un poquito, ok. Windy, for example, 
okay for example when you go out and windy for example this okay what is is excellent very good my dear student es ventoso con mucho viento okay in this case what is the answer okay in this case in 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 oh sorry i i forget that in this case the answer is Atacama, okay, and windows. What is that? According, this is Antarctic. Excellent. You have to write Antarctic. Antarctic is the windows desert around the world. Okay, and hottest. Oh, oh my God. Oh, mucho calor. Exacto. Hot. Entonces. In this play, in this adjective, you have to write Sahara. Sahara deserve is the hottest deserve around the world. El desierto del Sahara es el más caliente alrededor del mundo. Okay. Okay, you can look in the screen the answer. Okay. De las, las respuestas que darían. Antarctic coldest, biggest Sahara. Read, please. Excellent, Jose Sara. Very good, my dear student. Please, now, change your page and we are going to do a listening, okay? Please, pay attention to the listening part. According to the listening, you have to, uh, you have to mark the sentence true or false. T with true and F with false. Okay, listen, please. Track 42. I'm your host, Trevor Hansen, and you're watching Trevor's Travels. Now, last week, I visited Africa's Sahara Desert. This week, I'm in the Sonoran Desert of the Southwestern United States. I'm talking to Amanda Peters, a desert expert. Amanda, tell me about the Sonoran Desert. How does it compare to the Sahara? Well, the Sahara Desert has fewer animals than the Sonoran Desert. That's true. I've already seen more animals today than I did all week in the Sahara. Of all the North American deserts, I believe the Sonoran has the most diverse animal population. Can you tell me about some of them? Sure. First, I want to show you a roadrunner. It's one of the fastest birds in the Sonoran Desert. It runs up to 27 kilometers an hour. Wow, how fast can it fly? Actually, it doesn't really fly. It's a much better runner. It's fast enough to catch a rattlesnake, which is its favorite food. Speaking of rattlesnakes, tell me about those. Well, there are actually many types of rattlesnakes. The sidewinder is the most common one here in the Sonoran. It's actually the least poisonous of all the rattlesnakes, but it's still very dangerous. You'll hear its rattle before it bites. So the rattle is like a warning? Yes, exactly. The rattlesnake is one of the loudest animals here in the desert. Its rattle can be as loud as an ambulance siren. Wow. Now, I've heard there are actually jaguars in the Sonoran Desert. Yes, that's true. The Sonoran Desert has some jaguars near the Mexican border, but they're more common in Mexico and South America. The jaguar is one of the largest cats in the world. I hope I get to see one at some point. They are beautiful animals. Just don't get too close. Excellent, my dear student. Now, please, complete. Ahora le toca completar, ponga verdadero o falso, acorde lo que leímos, ¿ok? And, and then we are going to compare our uh, answers, ¿ok? You can put a stop. Puede poner pausa el video mientras terminamos de hacer la actividad, ¿ok? Y si se equivoca, no importa. Ok, let's start with activity A. Listen and mark the sentence true, T or F false. Okay, let's start. Please look at the the picture. Okay, number one. 
The Sonora Desert has the less diverse animal population in North America. This is true or false? False. Excellent. According to the reading, according to the listening, sorry, he said the most. Según el listening decía que en el desierto de Sonora había, tenía la mayor diversidad de animales, de población de animales en Norteamérica. No menor, de least, la menor. Ok. Let's start with number two. Please read. Ok, excellent. This is this animal. Roaduner. Ok. Is one of the fastest bird in the Sonora Desert. This is true. Fast. Fast. What is fast? Fast. It's rápido. Cuando usted corre rapidísimo, fast. Ok. In with superlative fast test with EST in the final. Ok. Number three. Please read. Okay, this is true, excellent. And I have a question. What is rather snake? Okay, please. Look at this video according to this. Okay, listen and pay attention. happened with my internet with my computer on hearing a strange sound the first reaction is to stay still then common sense advises any animal to take a step back it has entered forbidden territory the safety distance from a rattlesnake The snake doesn't want to harm anyone, but it doesn't like having anyone so close. It's scared, which is why it gives fair warning. The rattle is a good discouraging alarm. These snakes scare predators with it, and in general, any species that comes too close. The combination of tone, rhythm, and volume in some sounds is able to catch one's attention, as a rattle catches a baby's attention. But these sounds can seriously alter the state of mind of anyone who listens to them. Alarms make all of us nervous. Their repeated sounds with the right frequency and the genes of all living beings able to hear react in the same way. They stimulate the production of hormones that make us highly alert. When we talk about rattlesnakes, we normally talk about their venom and about how dangerous they are. Fear doesn't allow us to see beyond that. And the most surprising fact about these snakes, what's truly incredible, is how this reptile has been able to develop its extraordinary rattle, a unique device among living beings. Certain ophidians, ones even more primitive than the rattlesnake, also move their tails when they feel threatened or aroused. And on certain soils, they also produce noise, although it's no more than a whisper. Some authors contend that with these movements they're offering... Okay. Uh, rather snakes son serpientes de cascabel. They make song with, the, with their tail. Ellos producen sonido con su cola. ¿Sí vieron cómo mueven? Como un cascabel, como los chinescos que tienen los niños. Okay. And this is rather snake. Okay. And continue with the next, the next sentence. Okay. Please. Read. Okay. In this case, number four is false. Why? Because the, the listening say is the less poisonous. What is poisonous? 
Okay, dangerous, maybe. Venenoso, okay. In this case, the listening say is the less, es la menos venenosa de las serpientes de cascabel. Okay, uh, in this case, this, what is this? Side window, okay, please. You can look, is that? Okay. This, the, this snake has horns. Esta serpiente tiene cuernos, ok. Pero dice que es la serpiente mm, eh, menos venenosa de las serpientes de cascabel. Ok. Let's start with this. Five, please read. The rather, the rather snake is one of the loudest animal in the desert. Yes, with their tail. Okay. Then, please read number six. The jaguar is one of the largest, larger, largo, largest cat, largest cats in the world. That is true. Excellent, my dear student. Now, let's continue with this. Complete the sentences using the word in the box. Okay, remember, you have to use, in this case, uh, um, comparatives and superlatives. I have a question. When do you use comparatives? Okay, you use comparative to compare two things. Usamos los comparativos para comparar dos cosas, okay? And in, super, in the case of superlatives, you use superlatives when queremos descarta, descart, eh, descartar o justo seleccionar una cosa de entre muchas, ¿ok? Para eso ocupamos los superlativos. Entonces no nos vamos a confundir superlativos y comparativos. Ahora, ¿cómo identificamos cuando uso comparativo y cuando uso superlativo? ¿Ok? Eh, try to remember... With comparative, you have to use than, que significa que, ¿ok? Es para comparar, yo soy más alta que, y comparamos con otra cosa, ¿ok? En el caso del superlativo, hacemos una descripción diferente de algo en especial, algo peculiar, ¿ok? Vamos, number one, you have to use the most, more, fewer, or the least, ¿ok? Now, the Sahara Desert has, in this case, fewer animals than the uh, Sonoran Desert. In this case, you have to use a comparative. Why? Because the sentence is using than, the word than. Y esto nos muestra esta palabrita que estamos usando un comparativo. Y recuerde, la terminación de los comparativos es er, ¿ok? Uh, ok, let's start with number two. Of all North American dessert, Amanda believes the Sonora dessert has the most diverse animal population. Eh, tiene la mayor cantidad de, de población de diversos animales, ¿ok? Number three. The sidewinder is the less poisonous of all the rather snake. ¿Recuerda what is rather snake? Excelente serpiente de... Cascabel, very good. And uh, Sidewinder, what is? Exacto, the, the snake with horns. Las serpientes con cachos, ok. Con cuernos. Number four. The Sonora Desert has some viewers near the Mexico border, but they are more common in Mexico and South America. In this case, when you use a comparative and the adjective is long, you have to use more, more common. No podemos usar como, common y poner er, ¿ok? Sino more, cuando una palabra ya es larga, tanto en comparativo como en superlativo, ocupamos more para el comparativo y para el superlativo, most, the most, ¿ok? And... This is all. Ok, According, uh, acorde a lo que vimos. Ahora, piense un poquito. Do you like 
to live in the desert. ¿Le gustaría vivir en el desierto? Yes or no? Okay. Now, we, for today, we are going to talk about a son, something that is so interesting. Can you make it in the desert? Este es un quiz. Okay, es un test de cómo yo puedo estar en el desierto. ¿Qué haría en el desierto? Okay, ¿Qué pasa si usted se pierde? ¿Qué pasa si está muy caliente? Eh, si usted estuviera en el desierto en la noche, ¿qué haríamos? Okay? This is your homework. Okay? Vamos a leer y va a encerrar cuáles son sus su respuestas. Okay? For example, if you got lost, you could look for birds or be. You could sign, uh, sign all for hell with a mirror. What is the correct option? ¿Cuál es la correcta opción? ¿Qué haría en ese caso? Ok, very good. Number two. If you run out of water, A. You could get some from a cactus. You could find some near a, a bush. Ok. Number three. If you go too hot, Hey, you could find a... Please read. Okay, activity... Uh, option B. Okay, very good. Number four. Activity uh, option A. Now, please read option B. Okay. Uh, five. If you were in the desert all night, si tú estuvieras en el desierto toda la noche, ¿qué harías? Opción A. You could start a fire to sign a resort. You could, please read, scare animals away. Ok. And number six, please read. If you got hurt, activity A, opción A. Ok, opción B. Ok, my dear student. Now, listen and circle. Es que, and now, please read again and circle. Ahora, leamos nuevamente y vamos a encerrar cuál es eh, en su punto de vista, in your point of view, what is the correct option. Escojamos cuál es la respuesta o la correcta opción. Ok. Si ya terminó, vamos a esta actividad. Listen and check your answer and find your score. Ok. Esto no es exactamente que usted tiene que sacar 6 o 5. Ok. Es acerca de qué haríamos, cómo sobreviviríamos. Y acorde al listening nos vamos a dar cuenta si vamos a sobrevivir en el desierto, si quizás sobreviviríamos o si no. Definitivamente no vamos a sobrevivir. Ok. Yo hice el examen y saqué 3. Ok. And... What is the score and what is the, what is the conclusion? If you got lost in the desert, you will survive, but you will be very thirsty. Ok, quizás podría sobrevivir en el desierto, but I don't like, I don't like, I don't like the snakes. Eh, ok, no me gusta las serpientes, tengo miedo, Track terror, 43. así que yo no podría vivir ahí. Ok, now let's start with this, ok. Una vez que terminó la, la, el taller, vamos a escuchar el listening y vamos a chequear nuestras respuestas y vamos a ver cuánto puntaje tenemos, ¿ok? Please listen and check your answer. Track 43. This is the lovely Leslie on station WXYZ. It's Desert Survival Day with desert expert Paul Williams. Ok, I'll be honest, I'm not a big fan of the desert. It's too hot, and too many things can go wrong. Yes. What if I got lost? Well, if you got lost, you could use a mirror to signal for help. Just point it toward the sun. That's easy, and I always have a mirror with me. I have to look good. <laughs> Now, what if I ran out of water? If you ran out of water, you could get some from a cactus. Cacti store water in their stems. But cacti also have sharp needles. I wouldn't want to touch one. You could also look for birds. They fly in circles over water. 
but you must limit your movement. Walking, talking, and even eating will make you sweat, and you'll lose water. And I absolutely hate sweating. What if I got too hot? If you got too hot, you could sit in the shade near a bush or a rock. And what if I can't find any shade? If you had a poncho or a raincoat, you could build a small shelter with it. Just hold two corners down with rocks and prop the other two corners up with sticks. What if I'm out there all night? If you were in the desert all night, you could start a fire. It will send a signal to rescue teams and it will keep animals away. What if I fell and scraped my knee? Remember that cactus? Some have fruit called prickly pears. If you got hurt, you could cut one open and rub it on your cut. That's interesting, but like I said, I doubt I'll ever hike in the desert. But if you did, you'd be prepared. Okay, okay my dear student, this is your job. You have to do at home and you have to send me the photos according to your score, okay? What is your score? Zero, one, two, three, four, five or six, okay? And remember, if you lost, if you lost um, uh, in the desert, you could start a fire. ¿Hacemos un fuego para qué? ¿Con qué objetivo decía el, el, el speaker? Para que se alejen los animales. Yo pienso que esa es una de las mejores opciones, porque en el desierto hay muchos animales that I don't like. Okay, and this is all for our work class, my dear student. Please, please do the homework and study and practice your vocabulary. Okay, bye bye.